This video was brought to you by Private Internet Access. More about them later in the video. Quick human decency test. Would you kill a dozen children for a sports car? The correct answer is, what the hell? Of course not, you psychopath. Question number two, though. How many autistic kids would you permanently traumatize for a mansion? Oh, the correct answer was zero. It was zero. Final question. This time for a private jet. Are you willing to sell your integrity for decades, lie to millions, maim tens of thousands of people, swindle entire stadiums, and leave mountains of body bags in your rear view mirror? If you answer, Go big or go home. You, my friend, are a monster and are no longer my friend. Please stop watching now. For everyone else, I'm about to show you a window into the parasitic world of faith healers, greedy vultures in designer suits who, without batting an eye, would cripple Malala for a Klondike bar. Say, yay, holy Lord God Almighty. Woo! Rip the brace off. Take it off of your neck. Can you hear me out there? Take it off of your neck. In Jesus' name, O oh ye of little faith. Why did you die? Move it, move it, move it. Go on, bend it. Go on. What happened to you? How did you get like that? I had a herniated disc, and uh, they <clears throat> fused the bone in there. So the bone really, you know, it hasn't, it hasn't mended yet, and so that's why I have to wear the cast. <clears throat> he told me to wear it because if it slip out, I'm subject to be paralyzed. Number one, Morris Cerullo. This multi-millionaire televangelist raked in millions in tithe donations, purchased Jim Baker's Christian TV network Praise the Lord, and would fly around in a private jet to faith healing revivals where he claimed that he could heal everything from back pain to cancer. But here's what happened when BBC investigated and followed up with the people who Cirillo claimed to have healed. Audrey Reynolds suffered from severe epilepsy her entire life due to a congenital brain abnormality. In order to keep it in check, her doctors prescribed her three tablets for her seizure medicine. But when she saw a billboard in London advertising advertising Cerullo's faith healing services with the words, some will see miracles for the first time. She was intrigued and attended the meeting along with 80,000 other attendees in desperate hope of a miracle. Believing she was healed, Audrey Reynolds stopped taking her epilepsy medication and within days had a seizure in her bathtub and died. Cerullo also claimed that this four-year-old child had been cured of cancer. Do you feel any pain no. in your legs? No. No pain at all? No. Just run just a little bit with me. Come on, run just a little bit with me. Oh, yes. <laughs> Put your hand up. Cancer in the bones. She has um, cancer in the blood and the bones. It's all over. I want you to just raise your hand and say, Father, I... Thank you for the healing of the cancer of the bones. Go on, give him praise. At least in this case, he told her to follow up with her doctor to verify the healing. Get her back to the doctor right away, and in the next day or two, you come and tell us what they tell you as they verify the healing. But despite Cerullo's claims of supernatural healings, within a few weeks, the child's cancer had grown and she was dead. I hope there is a special place in hell for people who try and enrich themselves on the suffering of others to tantalize the blind, the lame, the dying, the afflicted, the terminally ill, to dangle hope before parents of a severely afflicted child is an indescribably cruel thing to do. And to do it in the name of God, to do it in the name of religion, I think is, is unforgivable. One Christian medical doctor named Dr. Peter May was able to track down and follow up with 22 people who Morris Cerullo claimed to have healed. And upon deeper investigation, wasn't able to verify a single miracle. His report is actually an incredible case study into the psychology that enables these faith healing tricksters. I'll link to it in the description below, but if you want me to do a deep dive video breakdown of it, let me know in the comments below.
Cirillo continued his faith healing rallies for decades, so who knows how many countless others followed his advice to their graves. But when Morris himself came down with pneumonia-like symptoms during the COVID-19 pandemic, he was rushed to the hospital, while his ministry declared that he would be miraculously healed. God, we declare that Morris Cirillo shall not only live, but my God, he will be stronger. He will be more anointed. God, he will be more youthful. You'll renew his strength and he will mount up with wings like an eagle. But the very next day, Morris Cirillo was dead. Number two, Benny Hinn. Let's be honest, no faith healing video would be complete without Benny freaking Hinn. This filthy rich little quack has been playing the masses for decades. He's been investigated so many times that the real miracle is how anyone can still take him seriously. Before each show, Benny's staff go looking for the most telegenic and gullible characters. They have no way of knowing whether these people even have the illnesses they claim. The very first woman you brought up on stage in Albuquerque was presented by you as being cured, a miraculous walk. But we saw her walking and chatting with one of your staff before your show even okay. began. Let me tell you something. That woman was a fake. So you admit you have fakes? My friend, we have fakes all the time that come up on the platform and tell me they've been healed. You turn the fakes we, into part of the show. No, 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 no. When I tell people, if you believe you've been healed, line up on the sides, and they do. And then we have people down below who check them. We cannot be 100% perfect every time. But you're still on television, on your platform, making claims of miracle cures that you offer no proof at that moment. Yeah, but, See, but look, again, if I go again, on television, again, I say, look, you, I've you, got a magic are, pill. Again, this is a magic pill that can cure any disease yes, on earth. Jeff, I want to please I correct break you. the law, wouldn't I? I want to correct you for the last time. I do not say to the individual, you're healed. They are telling me they've been healed. I leave Ferguson, you are healed by the power of God. We're not the ones claiming they've been healed. They are the ones claiming they've been healed. The disease, dear lady, has just died and you will live. And you never say to anybody, this person is healed. No, you're never, healed. No, no, no. The Lord has healed you. Jesus is healing your mama. I command the spirit of deafness in Jesus' name. Come out. These two brothers from Chicago, born profoundly deaf, were declared healed. A third brother, also deaf, was supposedly healed even though he wasn't there. In proxy, his mama is standing, and I break the curse of deafness on her son. Now! That's pretty exciting, but there's one problem. The boys are still deaf. At our request, a school audiologist tested them. The boys continue to have the same hearing loss that we've been measuring for years. No miraculous healing. No miraculous healing. But none of that stops Benny from making wilder and wilder claims. I've seen people manifest in, in our meetings where they turned into animals. In Vancouver, BC, I saw a man transformed into an animal before my face. I remember a man in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, that turned into a snake before my eyes and, mm -hmm. and, and, and 2,000 people saw him. Look in these eyes. I have never lied to you. I never will. A man turned into a snake before my eyes and, mm -hmm. and, and, and 2,000 people saw him. I have never lied to you. My goodness, he was so strong, he picked up the grand piano with one hand going, ah, screaming at me. Yes, sir, I saw that. I saw that boy set free. Eight men tried to carry him out, and he, he was throwing him up in the air like this. And then what happened? What happened? God knocked the devils out of him. That's what happened. Oh, Hallelujah. <laughs> he got so bold with his claims that even Pat Robertson of the 700 Club called him out on it. You were into some pretty nutty things. I mean, things you were saying were really off the wall. Well, I mean, I... You know you're absolute bonkers when Pat Robertson says that about you. You might get AIDS in Kenya. The towels can have AIDS. Romney will win. Election. You believe that? I absolutely believe that. What makes you believe that? Because the Lord told me. <laughs> well, that's why I'm glad to. I'm glad to know. I wasn't sure how you knew. <laughs> you were into some pretty nutty things. I mean, things you were saying were really off the wall. Well, if, if there's one or two of you that don't believe this, you're the most miserable people sitting here. Look, if you don't believe this, why don't you go out and just have a hamburger somewhere and go home? Number three, Torben Sondergaard. Torben Sondergaard is a faith healing Danish wackadoodle who was exposed by a documentary in 2019. At a faith healing revival in Holland, Sondergaard attempted to heal a man with severe arthritis named Ton Wiersma by casting demons out of him. With Sondergaard's encouragement, Wiersma pushed through the pain, got out of his wheelchair, and limped across the stage. Act 
acting on faith, Weir's my discarded his wheelchair, got baptized into Torben's church, and started riding a bike. <laughs> So he's beautiful. God is creative. Believing he was healed, Weersma continued to overexert his severely arthritic leg, and within several months, he sprained it so badly he had to have an amputation. Kort efter fjerner Tom Søndergaard videoen af helbredelsen fra nettet. Tom selv forklarer, at benet er blevet amputeret, fordi han vred om på det. Tom vil gerne give et interview, men Tom Søndergaard skal være til stede. You came to the meeting because you had trouble with your leg. You yeah. wanted to walk again on that yeah. leg, and you experienced healing. Yeah. In that leg. Yeah. But the leg wasn't healed. Uh, yes, I know. In my mind, I was healed. So my whole body was healed. But it is not a body that the carnal eye can see. But the body wasn't healed because the leg still got no. amputated. The, exactly, but that's what I say. The mind needed, needed to be healed in order that I could lose my leg, my carnal leg, and let my spiritual leg heal. God is creative. <laughs> and when Torben visited Austin, Texas for a healing revival, one of the attendees was a boy named Seth Christian who suffered from severe type 1 diabetes. According to the boy's mother, he was encouraged to remove his insulin pump and was told not to worry but to act in faith because worry is going against God and if he felt symptoms of his disease and got scared that it was a sin. Listening to their advice, the boy pushed through his pain and slipped into diabetic ketoacidosis before begging for his insulin pump. Eventually, they took him to his grandmother who rushed him to the ER where he was admitted into the ICU. According to his doctors, Seth was minutes away from going into a diabetic coma and dying. When I first started tracking Sondergaard's work, I thought that he might actually believe the baloney he was peddling. After all, a lot of smaller faith healers who don't understand mass hysteria, the power of suggestion, the placebo effect, hypnosis, collective effervescence, or the natural pain-numbing effects of adrenaline will simply emulate the actions of major faith healing charlatans who've mastered the art of the con, without realizing that it's all actually snake oil. At least, I was willing to give him the benefit of the doubt until I saw him attempting the leg extension trick, a famous scam that I covered in a previous video. So make of that what you will. But I mean, this is the same guy who claimed autism was caused by demons and would pull vulnerable, sometimes mentally ill people off of the streets before his followers would surround them, hold them down and scream in their face for the demons to come out. I command this spirit, come right now! Come out, you on this spirit! I command you on this spirit, come out right now, name of Jesus! One woman who was high functioning but developmentally disabled described it as feeling like she had been spiritually raped. <laughs> and was so traumatized that afterwards she was found speechless on the street and wound up in a mental asylum. A week before this happened, I was on a Spanish island with my daughter and we had a nice time. We drove around in a rented car and saw the mountains and had a happy time. One week later, my daughter, I couldn't recognize her. I called my doctor, she couldn't recognize her either. We had to have a psychiatrist to see her. And they said to me that this was a very severe trauma. Ida is still in pain. She is recovering. But here, five years after, has many flashbacks. Oh, and did I mention that he does this to kids? Go right Come on! Go, go, go. Vi vi vores børn, da vi så første gang, da vi første gang var helt hundrede. Efter alt det så sagde vores børn at spise is, og så var det en dæmon og løb så. We see many people got set free from demons and 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 heal and and one of them was a young girl, nine years old, who had autism. And that spirit just left her. But when his home country of Denmark began investigating his healing claims, he acted like he was facing religious persecution and fled to the US, where he illegally overstayed his visa for an entire year before being arrested for allegedly smuggling guns across the border from Mexico. But conservative evangelicals, who normally are so quick to hate on illegal immigrants, quickly rushed to his defense, demanding the release of this poor, persecuted Christian man of God. Regarding the case of Mr. Torben Sondergaard, He'd been persecuted by this administration and targeted, we believe, because he's an evangelical Christian minister. On a side note, Torben Sondergaard was probably one of the, quote, good people that Trump was talking about who come across the border from Mexico. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. <laughs> 
Either way, now he's free and at it again. Great! But unlike Torben Sondergaard, your internet browsing habits deserve to be free, which is why I recommend using private internet access. Right now, I am on Netflix watching Rick and Morty. Now I'm watching The Office, now Lord of the Rings. But Thomas, none of those shows are available on Netflix. You have to get Hulu, HBO, Prime Video, and God, the list is exhausting. Sure, Neanderthal me, but here's the secret. They are available on Netflix. It's just that different countries have different Netflix databases, which is why you may have tried to watch your favorite TV show while on vacation, only to find that your streaming service geo-restricted what you can watch where. But by using a VPN called Private Internet Access, you can get all of your favorite shows while traveling abroad and unlock thousands of movies and shows exclusively available in other countries while at home in yours. Watching Netflix without Private Internet Access is like going to the doctor and getting Benny Hinn as your physician. Well, I feel personally attacked right now. Just sign up and download Private Internet Access and turn it on with one click. It hides your IP address, encrypts your web traffic, and assigns you a new IP address in the location of your choice, and you have 84 countries and all 50 states to choose from. So now, any website that you visit thinks that that's your new location. Plus, you're now protecting your data from prying eyes. See, anytime that you connect to a public Wi-Fi connection, like a hotel, airport, or coffee shop without a VPN, your computer is potentially transferring a ton of unencrypted info that hackers, internet service providers, and others can see. But when using private internet access, that data is encrypted and safe, and they care so much about privacy that they don't keep logs on your traffic. And it's because of that level of commitment to their users' privacy that they're trusted by over 30 million people worldwide, including myself. And right now, if you use my special link in the description below, you can get an 83% discount. Plus, I've talked them into throwing in an extra four months for my viewers absolutely free. It works on every major platform, and it's just $2 a month with zero limits on how many devices you can use it on. Sign up risk-free today and take back your privacy. Number four, John Meller. <laughs> I would literally give my life savings all four dollars to see Todd Bentley and John Meller face off against each other in a spiritual battle of Bam Bam versus Bam 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 I think Eve was framed to put it best when she said, This particular brand of charismatic Christianity is just a bunch of grown-ups that are spiritually LARPing. And yet, people buy into these fantasies and keep coming back for more. How many meetings have you been to? With John, probably about a dozen. Every time I've seen so many amazing things, do I believe every single one? I'm not sure I do, but I've seen and I've spoken to people been healed of all sorts of things. Wow. I felt like heat over my body. John prayed for me and he broke the power of witchcraft of my life. And what's happened to you? Have you seen any change? Not at this point, okay. but I'm still fully believing I'm going to be well. And he's got multi neuron disease and he's absolutely desperate to have more time with his wife and his children. Absolutely desperate. And this visiting John Mellor a dozen times is his way of trying to kind of calm that desperation by taking action and by doing something about it. The doctors are saying no sorry we can't help you there's no cure yet you're doing really really well you've lasted longer than we thought you would go home and enjoy your time what are his other options he has none and i guess that's really hard because i keep hearing of all of these like amazing miracles that are happening and all these people with these horrendous illnesses that are getting healed and all we saw was people with sprained ankles and headaches and frozen shoulders feeling better I've been investigating faith healers for a long time now, and I have yet to see a single verified miracle. I've seen a few things that looked incredible at first, sure, but without fail, when you dig deeper, every single time, it's not a miracle. And yet, faith healers get bolder and wilder, and as their claims grow, so does their greed. Yes, it takes faith to make a thousand dollar vow. Yes, and you're going to pay it because it's to God. But he's going to give you seed to sh sow. He's going to give you finances supernaturally. You're, your step of faith is going to break the devil that's held you in doubt and unbelief and held back the blessings of God because you didn't have the faith to go forward. But this gives you the faith. When you sow, faith comes. Expectancy comes. Your eyes open. And that treasure that's been hid, there it is. It doesn't take brains to figure the thing out. You give, you get. The wilder and the bolder I get and the bigger I talk, the bigger, the wilder the miracles happen in people's lives. <laughs> I will see you guys in my next video. Don't forget to sign up.